Breakfast Club. We're pleased to have with us a special guest in the studio to talk about the coronavirus, uh, and that is Tim England, who is the director of Boyd County Emergency Management. Good to have you with us this morning. Uh, thanks for having us. I we're, appreciate we're trying it. to observe social distancing, uh, you know, yes. staying apart here, but uh, at the same time, I uh, want to get out some information about what you guys at emergency management are doing because you sort of coordinate a lot of things within the county, right? Exactly. That's that's our primary job is to coordinate and be a resource for our public safety and our local government. So that's we activated our emergency operations center last Wednesday. Um, we have four to six uh, staff a day for 10-hour shifts, and our job is to take requests as they come in um, from either health care, um, government, and we either find the resources um, or, we've, or we uh, coordinate response if we need to, to do that. So uh, we're, we're coordinating daily with local health department, Kentucky Department of Public Health, and uh, Kentucky Emergency Management. Um, and that, that's really our primary job, and that's what we've been doing. We've been tasked with several things from the health department. Now, when, when you talk about requests coming in from the health department, what type of requests? Well, most of the time it's request to the health department and it's from our health care providers, in PPE, the personal protective yeah. um, equipment. So our, we were tasked with, um, one of the tasks was to assess all of our health care providers. So that was pretty much two days worth of calling um, and seeing what, what their status was, how much they had, how long that could last them, and what they needed. And then we pass those to the health department um, in reports daily. Um, and any requests we get individually outside of those assessment times, we're sending those directly to them. So uh, that, that's been our biggest task, is making sure that our health care providers and our first responders um, have the proper PPE. We have been pretty fortunate, maybe get you to uh, uh, comment on this. I, I think we've been pretty fortunate so far. We've, we've seen nearly 200 cases in the Bluegrass State and five deaths now. But in northeastern Kentucky so far, we've been pretty lucky. It hasn't gotten here yet, but that gives you guys and, and everybody involved here a chance to be prepared when it does come. Right. And, and you know, the governor was very quick to declare the state of emergency, which yeah. put everyone on notice. Um, we declared actually very quickly. Um, the county and the, both cities did. Um, so that was an advantage for us because that gave us some tools to start implementing some restrictions. Um, and, and start looking at resources we were going to need. Um, and we have been fortunate in Northeast Kentucky so far. Yeah, so far. And, I, and we need to stress that because there are people out there that think it's never going to get here, and we do know that there was a case in Lawrence County, Ohio now. Right. That came out yesterday. So it's, it's closer and closer to home. Well, I think it's been right now the capacity of testing is why we've not seen positive. Yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I think that's we have to be realistic that there's positive cases here. We just have not got the, those folks tested yet. So I think as, as the capacity ramps up, I think we're going to you know, see those numbers go up. But I think if we continue to um, abide by the restrictions, uh, and I know it's difficult. Yeah. Um, I have a family. Um, it's impacted me personally. Uh, sure. We, we have um, a daughter that's about to graduate from college, and, we have, and she's also going to be getting married. So we've had to cancel showers. We've had to can we're having to look at the wedding. So it's not just our public that has been affected. Those of us that are implementing these restrictions are impacted as well. So um, it's, it's just important that we um, do the social distance. We stay home if we, if we can. Um, go out just for those essential things and uh, you know, get what you need. Commodities, the commodity flow is not going to stop. So you know, the big thing is not to take a truckload out of Kroger, but you know, get what you need for the week. Yeah. And, and another big thing right now that is a concern for us is our, our folks that may have unmet needs um, some of our seniors shut-ins disabled so we'd reached out on social media um, which is such a great tool for that and and said you know if you have a group an organization a church group that is is offering to assist taking delivery of medicine or food let us know um, so that we can have referral in the EOC do do you know or have you heard uh, any uh, indications that uh, Kentucky uh, and even Northeast Kentucky up here where we are but uh, Kentucky will have drive through testing or drive-up testing, is that going to happen? Would you all be involved in that if it does? Uh, yes, and, and we have, those discussions are, are happening both at the state level and local level. Um, the state is looking at regional test sites. Um, they've actually already identified several. Um, we've not been, they've not disclosed exactly where that location is. My guess is it'll be a regional as in five co, the five counties. Um, there may be one here, I don't know. Locally, we are, we do, we do, plan that but it's going to be in the future mm -hmm. um, the problem is finding the test kits 
yeah. in order to do that because the state is going to use the test kits they have access to through their corporate sponsors to do regionally. So local departments, um, health department would be responsible for finding their own testing, and that's right now is the, the difficulty part. Yeah, and, and I, I, another thing that comes to my mind, because you were mentioning how it impacts everybody personally, uh, you know, people that are out here, health care workers and, and people like, you know, with emergency management or anybody that's out there trying to coordinate things. You know, you think of them as, you know, workers trying to do this, but they're people too, and they have families and, and they get impacted. And, you Absolutely. Know, just like especially if you have teenagers, you know, they're probably the hardest ones that's really coping with this right now because right. they want to go, they want to go, they want to go. And they can't understand why they can't get out and go where they could maybe not even be – you know, show any symptoms, but pass it on to other people who get deathly sick. And that, that is the um, dangerous part of this. Yeah. Um, you can be completely asymptomatic yeah. and be positive and infect a great number of people if you don't um, practice what we're preaching, really. Um, and it, I, I know it is difficult. It's difficult for adults, much less the children and, and the teenagers. But I really think um, this will prove to, to flatten that curve, as they say, to reduce those numbers and reduce that that spike um, and it's and it's not going to be a couple weeks this is going to this is going to be a long duration um, but you know you can still get out it's a beautiful day today you can get out take a walk take your dogs a walk take your kids a walk you know the big thing is just keep that distance yeah. don't congregate in groups but you can still get out and do your hard work do your things you want to do yeah it's not like it's not like uh, people are saying you you, you know in Kentucky, they haven't said you can't, or in the United States, they haven't said you can't leave your home, period. You can't right. walk outside. Right. You can, just don't congregate, stay with your own family, who you're with anyway. Right. Uh, take a walk. I mean, today, you know, and they, here, here in Asheville, they've closed Central Park, but they've left the sidewalk open so you right. can walk. Now, you want, you know, if there's a whole lot of people walking, you want to stay away from them. But right. it's a little, pretty big around through Central Park. You can distance yourself pretty good. It is. And, you know, that was a difficult decision on both the city and the county's part to close the parks. Yeah. Um, because that's outdoor space. That gives someone where to go. But the, the issue we have is they were still congregating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be responsible, um, we had to shut those playgrounds and, and those areas down. And, yes, you're right. They can walk around the park. The outside loop is open. Um, so that is um, the big thing is just to get out try to enjoy it and, you know, um, make the best of a really really difficult situation you know the way the way i look at this and i was talking to somebody about it the other day and uh we we are all at this point and for the last couple of weeks or so and it seems like it's been longer than that but really really march has seemed like a really long month because of all this you yes. know uh but uh we've all been asked to sacrifice and, and and that's what it boils down to is you you are asked as an individual person to step up and sacrifice and that's what sacrifice is all about it's hard Sacrifice is never easy, no matter what you're sacrificing for. Right. Uh, and that's what we've been asked to do, is to yeah. sacrifice our liberties, our things that we like to do, and not be one of those people that says, this is not really real, and this is some hoax that somebody's, you know, dreamed up. People are dying. Yes. And and the the rate of infection, I saw yesterday, is three to four times what the regular flu is. So people say, well, a lot of people die from the flu. Well, they do every year, Okay. But the rate of infection of this disease versus the flu is three to four times. Yes. Which means you're going to infect more people if you get around. It is. And, yeah, the transmission, um, the ease of transmission is so much higher with this than it is with the, the flu. And, um, like I said, I think the dangerous part is people think that they're not showing any symptoms. So they're fine to go out. And, you know, it, that's not the case always. And until we get testing ramped up to where we can do um, the testing that, the folks want, um, then we need to take those precautions. And, you know, um, we're working on it, but it's been a difficult task from the federal down to the state and to local level, um, trying to get access to those testing to make it um, accessible to as many folks as we can. Right. And even if you do, and if you are feeling symptoms and you, you have questions, you know, you're supposed to call your, you know, your physician first and then, not, you know, not try to flood the hospitals. But if they do right. end up sending you to the hospital and you get a test, the, the way it's set up in Kentucky right now, you, you might as well figure that once you get tested, it's going to be three or four days or, or, longer. or longer before you find out because yeah. we just don't have enough labs right now, right? I mean, right. We're, they're opening up new ones every, every, yes. every week or every day, but we just don't have enough. Well, and, and that's the case. Um, the state lab obviously cannot keep up with that. So we do have um, commercial labs. Um, I know LabCorp and I believe Quest has came online. There, you're right. There's more every, every day that they're trying to get up to speed. Um, but that is 
collection time to result time can be anything from two to three days to up to seven days. It depends on which commercial lab you're going to and how much bag lock there is. Um, those have to be transported and they're not transported every time one is collected so it's, it's bulk shipment. So it, it takes time. Um, even with the test sites that we're you know contemplating down the road, um, that would be collection only. So you're not going to get results when you're there. Right. It's, it's, they're going to be sent to a commercial lab. So um, tracking is a big deal, um, and that's not as easy to do in a drive-through setting as it is in a healthcare setting. Um, the state has some things in place um, for their regional sites. I think will work well, um, but you know it's it's going to take cooperation from the public when that when that does start, and to remain calm and. You know, that's been our biggest battle is the panic and hysteria. And I understand people are scared. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, um, you know, regardless of your political affiliation, I think Governor has done a really good job at, at being a calming voice um, and reaching out every day and trying to explain it and not sugarcoat it, but try to show that there is some good things going on and that, you know, if everyone will remain calm and, and do what they're asked to do, that this – eventually will be over but it, it they have to abide by these precautions yeah you know he he i think he's done a great job i, I watch his news uh uh press release thing uh, every day at five o'clock he gives a report right. and and you know if you watch it every day you see he has a system he likes to talk about a few positive things right but he never sugarcoats it he also talks about the the stuff that we have to do right this is why we have to do it and then he gives the numbers which are stark because they keep going up right uh and you know he's he's pretty honest about everything and i think we like you said at the very beginning of this interview we started early and that's really helped us in the bluegrass state i think it has and i think that um you know that also goes to um to the fact that locally we did yeah um, absolutely uh, almost immediately within probably two days um we had all three both cities and the county had declared um, we were implementing some restrictions um, it's you know I, I can't do what I do and my my team can't do what we do if we don't have the support of local government so you know Mayor Pike Mayor Gilmore and Judge Taney have been uh, very supportive of our agency um, pretty much have um, you know Judge Taney pretty much told the, the staff in the county that you're now working for emergency management if they need something you do it and both mayors have been very supportive um, so that's what I need in order to, to do what we do. And so um, we, we have been operating um, since Wednesday um, at a level two, which means we have four to six ESFs or emergency support functions covered. Um, and that's, um, that's where we're gonna remain until this escalates and then we'll, we'll activate further if we need to. Um, in coordination with our, our neighbors, um, you know, we're working with Greenup County, um, Carter County, Lawrence County, Ohio, Sioto County, Ohio, uh, Cabell and Wayne, we have communication. We're doing um, bi-weekly calls, uh, conference calls with them, um, trying to get updates on what's going on in those areas. Because uh, we're all we're all in this together. We yeah. know what affects one is going to pretty much affect the others. And, Absolutely. Uh, so, and then of course with state and local, um, we're having weekly calls with our local officials and public safety. Um, those are on Fridays. So just trying to coordinate everyone's conference calls. Um, it's, been, it's been a challenge now because there's so much information that we're trying to feed between our agencies. Um, but I think in this day and time, technology has is, is enabled us to do that. Absolutely. Anything else that I haven't asked you about that you wanted to uh, let the public know? Uh, no, big, big thing is, you know, and I know people are getting beat over the head with this, but, you know, hand hygiene. Soap and water is your best alternative. Hand sanitizer if you don't have soap and water. Um, and I know that's even been difficult to find now. But um, the same... Avoid contact, um, maintain your distance. I know everybody's tired of hearing social distancing, but you know um, it, it's hard not to shake hands with someone. It's yeah. hard not to you know get up and hug one of your loved ones. Um, I have a I have a parent that is uh, my mom is in her 80s, and uh, my kids had stopped by her house. And I said, just take whatever you're going to take to the door and leave. Don't yeah. don't go in. And it's hard because you know that's the first thing you want to do is you want to hug. Absolutely. So um, you know and and clean frequently disinfect yeah. you know, and things you might not think about light switches and doorknobs and all those things that, that is high contact areas um, disinfect and clean and uh, just take care of your neighbors especially if you know you've got someone that's elderly um, check on them see if they need something from the store um, we're all in this together so we need to take care of each other I think that's a very good point to end it on and I think it's something that all of us need to do we all live on streets that probably have neighbors that are elderly and and, and maybe you know don't feel comfortable going out 
you know, we have such things now as, as uh, we still have phones and we, and we still have email and we still have texting and all that stuff. And we can find out from them what they need, go get it. Don't even have to go in, set it on their porch and say it's here. Right. You know, I just left you, you know, I don't want to bother you. And that's a good way to check on people because some people shouldn't go out, period. They really no. shouldn't. No. Especially if they're elderly and have underlying conditions, they probably should just stay at home, let somebody else do it for them. But we got to check on them, make sure they're okay. Right. And that's the big thing. Yeah, there, there are high risk and vulnerable populations, and we can do it without having contact. We can make that call or we can leave it for them. But, um, you know, just take care of each other. And, you know, the EOC is operational at 606-393-1801. If you have a concern or a, or a resource, or if you want to make a donation of PPE, if you have a business or an organization, um, we will take that. We will make arrangements for pickup and then make sure it gets to the health department for distribution. Great. That's great. Tim, thank you very much for coming by and talking to us today. Thank we appreciate you. I appreciate it. it. Very, very informative. Tim England, who is the director of the Boyd County Emergency Management. And, again, uh, if you need anything, they are operational, so you can uh, let them know especially if you got something to donate uh, like PPE, uh, masks, different things of that nature, uh, that would be great. Uh, we appreciate Tim coming and being a guest here on The Breakfast Club. Cool Hits 105.7.